My name is Alistair. I'm 28 years old. I was originally born in Joliet, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. I moved to Dallas for about 11 years for my dad's job and moved up to Colorado in 2015. I currently manage an esports lounge and an arcade, and I am a Buddhist. Growing up, I was the youngest of three, I had two older brothers, and uh, a lot of my social interaction was either with uh, people I knew from church or my brothers or like maybe five or six people in school. Uh, I actually grew up bullied a lot. Uh, I had a lot of interests that seemed to kind of deviate from other people on the playground and stuff. When I was in high school, um, I was in band and I had an anime club. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time with the anime club and there was a lot of um, like different shows we really liked and stuff. Or in high school, host club was really big at one point, and uh, there's a lot of like gender play in that anime, and uh, that was fun. Uh, this, this was like, knock, knock, knock. Are you opening the door? Hello, are you in there? Because it's just like, oh, okay, this is neat. Have no idea what that means for me yet. Once I got into college and I started like um, actively looking at like different research articles and things just because uh, I was just doing a lot of research papers. So it just kind of came naturally to me to just information gather and information gather. And I had a few friends already that were gender non-conforming or trans. And like I just started like reading a lot of information and things and going, oh, I think I'm gender fluid because this all makes kind of sense. I don't always feel feminine and I don't always feel like uh, I really understand where I am on the spectrum anyway. So I identified for uh, about five years as gender fluid and I kind of just ping ponged back and forth quite a bit. Going to bed one night and just like Snapchatting with a friend and about to fall asleep and I realized, oh, I might be trans. <laughs> and I go and I, I, I go and I Snapchat my friend Egan and I'm just like, I think I'm trans. And he replies to me, well, that's awesome. I'll still support you, I love you. And I was like, oh, okay. I went to bed. <laughs> and then the anxiety. <laughs> because uh, it's like, well, okay, I'm excited. I'm gonna go tell all my friends in my online communities because these definitely do not overlap with my family. And then realizing, oh, I probably should come out to my family. <laughs> and uh, just having a lot of like, an uncertainty and uneasiness just because it's like, I have no idea how any of them are going to react. Uh, what's funny was that my middle brother, uh, Dave, um, actually approached me about it. He was giving me a ride to school one morning and uh, this was kind of like, hey, by the way, uh, I know and I support you. You know, you're, you're my little brother, I love you. And it's just kind of like, I'm about to tear up. Like, <laughs> he's like dropping me off at the train station. I'm about to tear up going on the train. And it's like, okay. I came out to my mom uh, after I came home from hanging out with a friend one night. And I went immediately to my room and I changed out of what I wore to school that day into like, I have a, a, an owl onesie. <laughs> And I come back and my mom is like, hey, uh, I noticed you changed your name to Alistair on Facebook. Um, anything you want to tell me? I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, so I don't really know how far I'm going to go with this, but uh, I'm trans and I'm going to go by Alistair and I'll, I'd like to try out going by he and uh, I'll also accept they. Um, I don't know how far I'm going to go into transition, but I'm pretty sure this is who I am. My mom was like, he, they, doesn't matter. You're still my owl child. Uh, one of my friends uh, didn't realize uh, he posted a transphobic joke on his Facebook. Uh, so. It was one that was kind of like this vaporwave kind of background with a mother, like a motherboard on it. And it said motherboard. And then on the bottom part of it, there's this uh, young um, person with like pixie cut and glasses 
and looking like this and had like the caption, did you just assume that circuit board's gender? I was really hurt. Like, uh, so this is somebody I've never once in the two years I've known him uh, had an issue with uh, for any transphobic anything. Cause he's like been one of the people that like I've kind of been like, okay, I, I under, this person gets it. So it's like, I can kind of depend on him cause he's also stood up for basically similar kinds of jokes before. Like he, st he stood up for trans people against certain kinds of jokes like that before. So uh, I kind of like replied to it with, thanks, I hate it. And someone else posted, this is a bad post. And I replied, thank you. And he replied, eh, a friend wanted me to share it. And I go, does it feel good to know you're also hurting other friends by sharing it? And he deleted the post and he uh, messaged me about it. And uh, I kind of had to kind of go, do you, you understand why this is hurtful? He was like, kind of, but I, now I, I feel really bad about it. Like I, 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 realize, I realize now it hurt you and it's wrong. And it's just like, you know, especially with the timing of it. It's like, what do you mean about the timing of it? I had no idea that the uh, current presidential administration had put out the memo about erasing gender identity from civil um, civil rights protections. He had no idea. He, he hadn't checked the news in like a week. These kind of posts uh, kind of get away with themselves because everyone knows the Tumblr stereotype of a young trans person who's AFAB and or I signed female at birth and very outspoken about trans rights and very hard line. If you're not doing this, you're transphobic. And it's like, you know, trans kids these days have such an amazing gift to be able to be outspoken and to be able to understand themselves at younger ages. And unfortunately they're living in a society that is all connected through internet. So those of us who had like really shitty <laughs> views as young trans people or even as young people before we knew we were trans uh, don't have the accountability placed on us that trans kids do today. So this kind of joke is meant to target those trans kids that may be going through a phase and are really social justice-y because of it. And um, at the end of the day, not only is it um, demeaning for trans kids, and it's off, it's kind of like blowing out of proportion their um, worldview as a joke, but it's also creating this uh, damned if I do, damned if I don't for any trans person, because it's conflating the idea that we can't stand up for our own gender because we're going to be perceived as we're going to get angry and irrational if you gender anything. The clinic uh, itself I went to, I went for like an annual exam. And when I was doing my intake, they asked me about pronouns and things. So I, I, I was honest with them because like I understand that if you're not honest with your provider, uh, at any point and you have an issue, that's on you, that's not on them. So I told them I am trans, I, I am, I go by he, and my preferred name is Alistair. At the time I wasn't, it wasn't my legal name yet. And they asked, well, do you want to start hormone replacement therapy? We also offer that, we just have to send you to the downtown clinic for it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so they set me up and my first uh, injection date was set up for May 6th. Uh, after I did like my blood work a couple weeks before that. Uh, when I first started out, uh, they started me on a really low dose. So I didn't really, really, f I didn't really feel like I was like, my hormones were changing too much. My job at the time uh, decided that, oh, maybe this is affecting things, but they didn't really start uh, deciding this until they allowed me to have Alistair as my name on my name badge which I got my name legally changed in July of that year. And then in September, my management came to me and said, hey, we're gonna put your name on your badge. Okay, <laughs> I guess this means we're good, right? Because 
Like, cause they, like, I've been partially out at work at that point to some coworkers and not all coworkers and definitely to no customers. <laughs> cause, uh, I worked customer service and I worked with a lot of people who needed to pay like rent and get their social security money out every month and things. So I, and the, like our clientele for that were usually on the older side, usually from, uh, communities themselves that just straight up call everyone sir or ma'am or um, don't really go outside of the gender box much at all uh, in either like positive reception or not. Uh, so I definitely was not out to my clientele at the time until they were like, hey, we're going to put your name on your badge. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I guess this is all right. So when I start being more assertive about my identity because I feel empowered now that they've let me have my name on my badge, Suddenly, it's the testosterone making me too aggressive. And I actually got pulled into the office by one of my assistant managers, um, who ironically is also our HR manager at the time, and the main store manager who usually defaulted to the other assistant managers. And the HR manager basically told me, if you correct one more person about your identity and they take it badly, you're fired. They literally told me that uh, that I wanted to be out at work and that I made the decision to have my name on my badge when literally what had happened was there was someone else that I was friends with at work at, at and she like left that same store about three months before I did. Um, but uh, she kind of vouched for me for one of our other assistant managers who was much more, who's much more supportive, like much, much more uh, understanding of uh, trans bodies. And uh, she had gone to that manager and said, you know, it really isn't fair. Alistair doesn't have his name on his badge. He still has like his, his birth name on there and he's legally changed his name at this point. So it wasn't even me vouching for myself to get my name on my badge. It was a, a coworker with good intentions. Um, Unfortunately, you can't always rely on good intentions. Uh, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Trans people that are coming into themselves now, like especially kids and people who are early in their transition, I just want people to know that it, it's your journey, regardless of how you get there and where you're going. Um, it might take you more time to figure out exactly where you are in your transition, and you might take you less time. You might do more in your transition, you might do less, you might do hormones, you might do surgery, you might do none of it. And all of that is valid. There's a, a zine that I picked up a few years back from Etsy that's called Not Trans Enough. And it's about so many different trans people and their identities and how their relationship with it uh, trumps the idea of not being trans enough because who you are is who you are, regardless of what other people say.